Kraken, everybody. I'm Craig Benervini in the Roller Hockey International Studio. Welcome to RHI Rewind, our look back at the 1994 season. On the program, the Chicago Cheetahs, they've won two straight. They're 4-2 now against the Philadelphia Bulldogs, who are 3-5. and five. Jim Fox, undefeated so far. Welcome again to the show. We've got a good one for you. Al Secord and Dave Schultz, two big names involved. Secord playing for Chicago, Dave Schultz, the GM head coach of Philadelphia. Once again, that NHL influence is apparent in Roller Hockey International. Both impact players when they play the National Hockey League, and both players very physical. With Al Secord, he was a hard hitter. He could also score goals. Dave Schultz, everyone remembers him with the Philadelphia Flyers. He was an intimidator. But now they're involved in roller hockey. They have to change the way they think about the game. It may be more difficult on Al Secord. As a player, he'll be down on the floor so the tempers can rise. With Dave Schultz, he's a head coach now. He's behind the bench. He has to remain composed. And in roller hockey, what he thinks about positioning and offense. That can't be easy to do for Dave Schultz. We'll talk more about the fighting issue as we move along. Two guys to watch out for. Kent Hawley for Philadelphia, number 93, and number 98, Lottie Tressel for Chicago. An interesting contrast between Hawley and Tressel. With Hawley, he's a big man. 28 points in only eight games so far. He uses his size, so he's tailored to both ice hockey and roller hockey. In roller hockey, he gets open with the size, especially in front of the net. Lottie Tressel, on the other hand, he's more of a skilled player. He's a European player. So all his life, he grew up with the dipsy doodle, the fast skating, the back and forth action. Not a bad shot either. He could shoot the puck. You're right. Well, let's get out to the spectrum in Philadelphia now. The Chicago Cheetahs taking on the Philadelphia Bulldogs. A crowd of over 3,700 was on hand for this Eastern Conference matchup. Here's the Chicago lineup. In the net is Troy Siebel. On defense, Carl Ballamont and Paul Dukovac. And up front, former 12-year NHLer Al Secord and Ron Handy, who also saw some NHL action. Troy Siebel is in the Nets, 25 years of age from Alberta, Canada, a record of four victories and two defeats. The Philadelphia lineup in the net is Jim Slazik, on defense Jim Peters and Jason Smith, and up front forwards Don Martin and Ken House. Jim Slazik in the net for Philadelphia, he's 24 years of age from Columbus, Ohio, an even record of one victory and one defeat. This hooking penalty by Will Averill at 2.41 of the first quarter led to Chicago's first power play where we joined the action. At the point, Balamont working it back and forth with Jeff Rolacek. Rolacek working in for the better angle, and he went wide of the net. Now played by Secord in the corner. Back out, Valamont. Valamont, Secord, a little give and go. They work in for the better shot. Secord again taking a look toward the net. Secord into the corner, nice passing in front shot, score! A setup for Ron Handy, and he scores quickly in the power play, and the Chicago Cheetahs score the first goal of the game, a nice passing play on the power play. The Cheetahs taking advantage very quick on that power play, and Randy Boyd, the coach of the Cheetahs, told us they've had a layoff, so they want to get started quickly. They did right there, nice move right there. A nice bit of stick work led to this goal by Lottie Tressel, giving Chicago a 2-0 lead. The game action continues with five minutes remaining. Here's Perry Florio, played with Johnstown last year in the ECHL, and he enjoys it so much he lives there now. He wanted to say hi to his friends back at the Haven, a bar back in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Here's Tressel, a three-on-one Chicago to Nordello. Oh, back to Tressel, they score! A three-on-one executed to perfection. The last pass came from Tim Breslin. Three, nothing, Chicago. And Jim Slazik right there, all he does is shake his head, and that's exactly all he should be expected to do. An outstanding attack, three on one. The passing is going to go back and forth. A great attack triangle set up by the Cheetahs right there. What you try to do on an outnumbered attack is set up in the triangle so you have a lot of depth. Nice fake shot, but the depth to the attack. If you have all three players skating across on the same plane, there's not much opening up right there. Another look at it. One pass, the one-touch passing by the Cheetahs has been impressive here in the first period, a 3-0 lead. Here's Chicago's 3-0 lead did not seem to affect Philadelphia's home crowd, and the players responded to their fans' support. Let's return to the game now for the second quarter face-off. Probably why he's on the Bulldogs. Philly on the power play. This is their leading man right here. Kent Hawley having an outstanding season. 28 points, 8 games. 
and four power play goals. There's Jamie Cook on the left wing. Back to Pauly. He works it over to Clancy. Returning the pass now to Averill. Cook, a shot, he scores! A good setup for Jamie Cook as they worked it to the right and they worked Seabell over to the left of the net. Then they came back to set up Cook and Jamie Cook has the Bulldogs on the board. Here's the setup and a great shot by Jamie Cook as he beats the goaltender, but the passing is really what set it up for Jamie Cook, his 10th goal of the year. So Trestle going off, defected from Czechoslovakia back in 1987. He was a draft pick of the Quebec Nordiques, and uh, his team was playing in Austria. He left the team with his wife. He could not get both of his sons out. He only got one son out. His other son, just two years old, lived with his mother for a few years. Uh, with Lottie's mother, that is. As Averill gets a shot off. Now another chance in front. Holly, oh, he had a great chance to score, and it's dumped down. And a few years ago, both of Lottie's sons joined him over here. Craig, you have to watch for Yachty, a big guy right in front of the net. Holly's going to be there. He's a big man, 6'4". All kinds of reach. If he doesn't screen, he gets a rebound. There he is. He scores! Hey, who do I have to watch out for, Jim? Well, I think I picked it up right <laughs> there, but it wasn't a rebound. Ken Holly just picking up a puck and keeping his momentum going right through. Kind of an unusual play. The Bulldogs didn't even stop to set that one up. It worked perfectly, though. A lot of times on the power play, you stop and set it up. The drop pass gets everyone going one way, and Holly comes from behind. Another good, oh, what a great crisscross right there. And Holly, the timing was perfect. A nice low shot right along the ice. Difficult for any goaltender to come across. Ken Holly, six foot five, uses the reach, and he gets the dogs right back in this game. It did not take long, which is a classic RHI story. You could get back in a hurry. A minute and 19 in, the Bulldogs have gone from a 3-0 deficit to now just a one-goal deficit as Hawley gets his 14th goal of the year and his fifth on the power play. And boy, if Randy Boyd in Chicago were only listening to Jim Fox, it might still be 3-1. They come in again, that scores! And Philadelphia has tied it up! Oh my, what a start for the second quarter for the Bulldogs as Ted Dent the twine and Seville who looked unbeatable in the first quarter has given up three in the first a minute at 42. Seville hey. shaking hey. his head right there just a little drop pass off to the side you want the shots coming from the angles but then he goes way up top into the lingerie section right there watch this Seville is set up perfectly he has the good position he's in the middle of the net but just as Seville the goaltender went down that's when Dent pulled the trigger whoa three nothing start for the cheetahs Bulldogs come right back to tie it up. As Troy Sebo wipes any liquid or dirt from the crease, he hopes the Bulldogs' comeback is short-lived. I'm down here with Rob Granada. Rob, let's talk about that last penalty kill you were on. Three on two. You're one of two guys out there. What are you trying to do? Uh, basically, you just try to stay in the middle and uh, take his way uh, as many passing lanes as you can and let your goaltender see the puck. Anything else out there? I know it's, it's kind of unusual for everyone to see that thing. I thought you did a great job using your stick taking away the passing lanes. Anything else to keep an eye on? Uh, just basically let your goaltender see the puck and uh, don't let him get to any rebounds. All right, good luck. Thank you. Five seconds on the penalty. It's dumped that back toward the center line. And Will Averill will go back to play it. Averill all the way to the end. He scores! Kent Hawley tipping it in. And that was a classic example of what you could do in the R.A. shot. The puck came back into the Philly zone, but Averill did not have to wait for his mates to come back on side. He just came across the line, hanging in front was Hawley. That easily, it is now 4-3. to three. It's exactly where you want Hawley, right in front. And there's the long pass, redirection, simple play. Simple when you see it executed exactly like that. You mentioned it, Averill. And look at the positioning there of Hawley. Actually, it looks like it bounced. We're going to have to get the official call. I think Hawley's getting credit. But it looked like it bounced a couple of times. It really doesn't matter, Craig. You called it exactly correct. That long pass, you don't have to worry about a neutral zone. Now Philadelphia, four straight goals. Wow. Four goals for Philadelphia. In six minutes, five goals now for Philadelphia. In just six minutes and 48 seconds, the Bulldogs have tallied again. It is five to three, and the fans are going wild here at the Spectrum. 
and that man is not the coach of Chicago who can't believe it, Randy Boyd. After falling to a 3-0 deficit, the Philadelphia Bulldogs have rallied for five straight goals, and they now lead 5-3. We continue with the action in the last four minutes of the second quarter. 4.25 to go. It's been a long period for Chicago. Donnie Martin skating up. And a four-goal game against St. Louis early in the year. Good pass from Smith. Here's Martin to the backhand. Martin behind the net. Good look from our end zone camera. Smith waiting. Lost control. Good play by Tressel. Back checking. Here's Mike Waldron up to Lottie Tressel. He has Nardella. Nardella over there. Shoots. Oh, he took some time to shoot it. They have been better off one time it there. And Nardella bumped by Martin. Here's Valamont coming in. Deep in the corner for Tressel, back to Valamont, who scores! Great setup by the Chicago Cheetahs, and they're on the board finally here in the second quarter. The Cheetahs getting right back in it. They had a little break here. They were working on a delayed penalty, and Valamont showed you right there exactly the style of player he is. As a defenseman, he picks the right spots to jump into the hole, and 95 picked the right spot. While on a four-on-two power play, Bob Nardella slipped past to Jeff Rolasek in the slot, tied the score at five with a minute 32 remaining in the half. Less than a minute later, Lottie Tressel completed his hat trick and regained Chicago's lead on this rebound of Robert Walworth's one-timer from the left circle. The Cheetahs took a one-goal lead into halftime. Welcome back to the Rewind Studio. It is safe to say that Al Secord of the Chicago Cheetahs is a very versatile guy. He was a 50-goal man one season in the National Hockey League. Now he's rumbling his way through the RHI. And this guy is not only high-flying on the surface and on the ice, he's high-flying in the air. This aircraft here is a uh, Beach 1900. It's a 19-seater passenger airplane. It's a fun airplane to fly for pilots. It's uh, very high performance. If you want to come on aboard, I'll show you some of the stuff that we have. Now, this is the, uh, the Beach 19 uh, airliner cockpit. I'm a first officer with this airline. I'm hoping in September, after the season's over, that uh, I will upgrade to a captain and be flying from this side. This aircraft flies at 247 knots. This is uh, what we call a barber pole speed. This is as fast as we can go. I basically became interested in flying when I was a teen, fighting forest fires up in northern Ontario, Canada. They flew us in uh, to the fires in different kinds of aircraft. And uh, I always thought if I got a little bit of extra cash, uh, which I did get from professional hockey, that I would get my licenses, and I started in 1984. I think the most exciting aspect is the uh, takeoff and landings. Scoring a goal or playing hockey, getting a good hit, you do, uh, get an adrenaline rush and I think as athletes are used to getting that rush every day flying does it for me now. I got involved in the roller hockey uh, shortly before the training camp started. Randy Boyd, the coach, had called me. Got a hold of Al up in Michigan where he's uh, flying out of and he uh, he was in town uh, the next couple days. He came down and we talked and he met with the uh, the president and the GM of the team. I basically had to check out my flying schedule which has priority and uh, it worked with the time off and the schedule of the roller hockey. The roller hockey, I think, is more difficult. Uh, in hockey, if you lose the puck, you can stop and go back and get it. It's very difficult for me to fit practice time with the Cheetahs. I've only practiced with the team three or four different times. I try to work out as much as possible. A few times I've had the roller blade on the runways up in northern Michigan. I've put together a team here Pretty good experienced players have been around, uh, kicking around the minors. They all know of Al Secord, they know what he's done in the, his career in the NHL. Uh, I don't think there's too many guys in this league that really want to deal with Al and get him too upset. You know, he's, he's like I said, he's a fierce competitor and, uh, you know, no one's going to be able to take advantage of him, that's for sure. He brings that element of toughness to the team, just to know that he's around. The other teams don't take as many liberties with us. Growing up in the Chicago area and seeing Al and the Blackhawks and then, uh, I had uh, fortunate enough to ski with him a few times on the ice, and then heard he was playing here. I was real excited that uh, get a chance to play with him. He's the hardest worker, and uh, you know that's one thing you can learn from him. 
He comes to play, he plays hard, he, he hates to lose, and he does whatever it takes. Uh, you know, when he's called upon to go out on the floor, he goes out and he, he just works his butt off, so it's contagious. The goalies are getting set for the second half, and we rejoin the action just after the third quarter faceoff. Leaves the puck out for Donnie Martin. Here comes Don Martin working his way up, a product from London, Ontario. On the left wing, shooting! Oh, good pad save by Siebel. He went the other way there, went for the far side. Siebel stayed with him. Here's Trestle coming in. Trestle through a screen, snapshot, stopped by the goaltender, Slazik. And here comes Philadelphia quickly the other way. Jim Peters. Slap shot, score! Oh, what a shot by Jim Peters. And Dave Schultz is saying, thanks for stopping by on that curb that one morning. Big slap shot for Jim Peters, 6-6 six, six hockey from Philadelphia. That goal coming from a bad angle. It was back and forth action for the most part here in the third quarter. And Peters winds up. At first, I thought perhaps it was a deflection off the defenseman's stick. But no way, you'll see it here. Slap all the way. Perfect shot right into the top corner. I think one thing Peters used there, Craig, was just a very small backswing. He didn't waste much time getting to the puck. And right there, that bad goal, the high one from the bad angle. We have a change in goaltenders. Greg Smith is going to go into goal for the Chicago Cheetahs. And Troy Siebel, who had an excellent first half, he's going to have a seat on the bench right there. So coaches sometimes look to a goaltender change to get your team back focused. Philadelphia continued their comeback with two goals midway through the third quarter. Don Martin scored on a two-on-one passing play against relief goalie Greg Smith. Kent Hawley then completed his hat trick on a deflection down in front of the net as Philadelphia regained the two-goal lead at the end of the third period. Craig Minervini back in the Rewind studio with Jim Fox. And certainly, Jim, the RHI builds itself as family entertainment. And that's why they made the number one no-no in the league, dropping the gloves. Jim, you can't do that. If you do, you get into some big trouble. There's no doubt RHI cracking down on the violent aspects of the game. Fighting, big penalties. What happens? You get kicked out of the game that you fight in. Also, you miss the next game. You get the five-minute major. And one thing that is really unique to Roller Hockey International, any five-minute major especially in the fighting, a penalty shot is awarded against your team. So RHI is cracking down. Ironically, with some of the tough guys in the league, like Dave Schultz in this game with Philadelphia, Tiger Williams, the head man of Vancouver, two guys well-known for their fisticuffs, and yet no fighting in the league. Major penalties, though, are a major concern for any coach. Any major penalty. doesn't matter. High stick, a slash, boarding, whatever you want to call it. If you get a five-minute major, it's a match penalty. You're gone from that game. Once again, someone's in the box for five minutes, but you get that penalty shot awarded against you. The RHA wants to crack down on any type of violence. They want this game to be all offense. And word has gotten around quickly around the RHA. Let's get back to the game. Philadelphia and Chicago. Jeff Rolacek scored his second of the game less than two minutes into the fourth quarter to bring Chicago back within one. We go back to the action now, just after the goal. The Cheetahs get right back, they're within one. That's scary for Philadelphia. Oh, he put it in his own net! He put it in his own net! Paul Tukovac just scored into his own net! And that one will be on the highlight reels around the country. Reminds you of the football play when, when you remember the uh, player went the wrong way for a touchdown. Nothing Dukovac can do on this one except laugh. He had a little laugh. With just over one minute to play and down by two goals, coach Randy Boyd has pulled the goaltender. Every time the Cheetahs have taken the puck down low, there's no room to maneuver. I would say the odds would favor Chicago here to, to score. It's a five-on-two advantage. Philadelphia would, would just hope they can get the puck once and clear it. And they make it a chance here. Clancy had a chance to clear it, couldn't get it. Now, Walwork working in. Chet score! Rolacek getting his third goal of the game with a minute remaining. 
and Chicago, yes, clicking on the power play, 9-8, Philly. The save before that, there was no rebound. This time, the rebound will lie right to the goaltender's feet. Slazik takes this one, good positioning again. Rolacek just finds a little bit of room tweeners there. There wasn't much room, a couple of inches. We'll get a good look at it from this positioning. You saw one of the defenders just fall down. Now watch this, it snuck home somehow between the pads of the goaltender. And now we have a little delay. Chicago goal. So Chicago gets right back into this. Seventh goal of the season. Three goals, one assist, not a bad night. There's the goaltender on the bench having a rest. Greg Smith, he came in in the second half. Now he's out, five on three advantage for the Cheetahs. Jim, not much, much of a disadvantage in the RHI. They only bring it out to what would be behind the blue line. Shot goes toward the net wide. That is not gonna be an illegal clear. Smart play there, coming right off the face off. The centerman and the Bulldogs just cleared the puck all the way down the ice. That cost them 10 seconds. Wrestler coming in. Across the floor, they're working. Now Valamon has it, 23 seconds to go. Shot blocked, chance for Clancy to clear. He's hooked from behind. He sends it toward the goal and in! Derek Clancy! With a fly, saves about a 130 footer. And he has put the dogs up by two. I don't want to say cinched it yet because this is the RHI, but it might be the breaking point in the game for the Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs didn't make it easy on themselves with all those penalties late in the fourth quarter, but what they did was came down low, crunched it, and Clancy will take the end-to-end -end shot. It's on its edge, it's rolling, it's rolling, and it doesn't move left to right, right into the middle of the net. So just clearing the puck there. He didn't have to worry about the illegal clearing because his team was shorthanded. And Derek Clancy, seventh goal of the season, a lot of hard work by the penalty killers near the end of this game by the Philadelphia Bulldogs. 16.1 seconds remaining. They lead 10 to 8. In an exciting back and forth game where they had to come back twice, Philadelphia pulls out an exciting 10-8 victory against the visiting Chicago Cheetahs. Back in the Rewind studio, Craig Minervini with Jim Fox. We talk about the RHI, Jim, being streaky. You really saw that in this game between Chicago and Philly. Talk about a defensive shell. I don't think we're ever going to see that in Roller Hockey International. This game went back and forth. 3 nothing Chicago. Philadelphia comes back with five straight. They go back and forth all night. It just proves in Roller Hockey, no lead is safe. It's back and forth action. There's no stopping. And in a 22-game season, each game is really critical for that playoff run. It certainly is. The offense is going to be there. But the defensive shell, as I mentioned, you might not see it. But you know, as the playoffs get nearer and nearer, I think more teams will spend a little more time concentrating on defense. Some stories around the league at this point. Pittsburgh 8-0, Anaheim 9-2, the defending champs, and the Portland Rage are 3-8. But I think they're going to play a little bit better second half of the year. We'll see. For Jim Fox, Craig Minervini, we'll see you next time on RHI V1.